Welcome everybody. My name is Fred Dixon. I'm the product manager for Big Blue Button and welcome to day two of the Big Blue Button World Conference. The theme for today is going to be on administration, which means setting up, maintaining and supporting fairly large scale deployments of Big Blue Button. We have a really good session to start off with. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce Malte Dreyer. Uh, Malte and I have known each other for probably eight months for a year. Uh, there's been a huge amount of use of Big Blue Button around the world, and probably no more so than in Germany, uh, for a number of reasons. Um, and the great thing was that the use of Big Blue Button was enabled by all the open source components that we had provided. So the Big Blue Button community provided Big Blue Button itself, Scalelight Load Balancer, the Moodle plugin, and a fairly active uh, community of people to support it. So it's my pleasure to introduce Malte Dreyer. He's a director of IT, uh, Humboldt University, Berlin. Uh, Malte currently works at the Computer and Media Services at, at the Humboldt University. And Malte does research in computer and society, computer communications and network, and computer security and reliability. And Malte, I'll turn it over to you, and we're looking forward to your presentation. Thanks a lot for the introduction and uh, the opportunity to host this session today. Very nice because uh, we, during the pandemic, start of the pandemic until now, Big Blue Button really supported the schools and universities in Germany by high degree. Um, first of all, I have to introduce you to one, uh, to the ZKI, that's a German membership corporation. And it's kind of uh, uh, comprising all the higher education IT centers. And it has working groups, and one working group is for strategy and organizational aspects where all the IT heads are organized in. Uh, the ZKI overall has around 300 members, which is around 80% of all universities in uh, Germany. And uh, within this ZKI, we conducted a lot of surveys during the pandemic just to organize ourselves and to find help in these difficult times. Okay, we just wait a moment if Multi is reconnecting. Yeah, please come back in a second. Oh, could you hear me? There you go, Multi, you're back. Okay. Here, I'll make oh, you right. presenter again. Thanks. Yeah, so many of the surveys I will show you were conducted by the ZKI. That's the timeline of the pandemic, as all of you might know. Beginning of March, we all learned that we have to prepare for digital semesters. And uh, to get things started very quickly, we immediately also in April started to uh, conduct some surveys, uh, which services are deployed, uh, how the IT is affected, what services have to be uh, created and designed in a very fast way. And uh, so all in all, there were quite some surveys later on in the year, also one on the usage and deployment of Big Blue Button. And in February this year, top trend survey, or quite a lot, lot. And you can see here as well, that's the green one. That's the European Court of Justice ruling, Schrems 2. I will talk about that a bit later. Uh, one of the surveys showed immediately that video conferencing systems, as all of you know, during the pandemic got uh, far more priority than they had before. Before it was uh, nice to use video conferences. It, during the pandemic, it got essential. Kind of everything is uh, relying on that. So also the reliability, performance, and uh, ease of use of these video conference systems uh, are a lot more important than before. As you could see here, most schools and many universities in Germany are using Big Blue Button. And uh, it's quite impressive to me how big many of these installations are. Some for the schools, like in Baden-Württemberg, are up to 200,000 concurrent users. The one in Mainz, as I will show you later, can handle around 50,000. And uh, many installations also for universities can handle up to around uh, five to 10,000 concurrent users. So all in all, that's an impressive number of uh, 
EBV installations in such short time, just during a pandemic. That's an example from University of Mainz. On working days, they do have up to 250,000 participants, uh, 45,000 concurrent participants, and that's quite a high number in my understanding. And that's very important. This is uh, the feedback uh, you could give after each BBB conference. And the left side is the user feedback and the right side is the moderator feedback for the conferences in University of Mainz. And uh, you could see that uh, uh, feedback provides quite a high satisfaction with the BBB system, which is this one is uh, from this year. So it really improved and the version 2.3 also helped a lot to uh, get the feedback better from BBB. Now I think it's quite well established and as the numbers show, you can rely on it. Uh, in February this year, <clears throat> we also made a survey on which solutions are used. You can find the QR code here at the bottom right to get to the study in English. Um, and that compares which video conference solution is actually in place in the universities. And you can see a small win for a big blue button here, two votes more than for the second place Zoom product which is a, a huge success because when you compare, you could compare the, to, to this uh, survey we did uh, last year, then the numbers are kind of, uh, BBB is just starting with around 10 installations and Zoom was a, a winner. Now the picture changed a bit. So many are really relying as the first video conference solution on Big Blue Button. And uh, because of that, in the ZKI working group, we started uh, a concerted effort to improve Big Blue, Button, Big Blue Button for German higher education institutions. So the, the objective was uh, we have a need for strong video conference solution that supports European standards for data protection. That's about the Schrems II ruling. I will show you some. And, uh, we found out that the biggest needs are about uh, security, scalability, and the functional depths necessary. And as all of you know, the version 2.3 delivered a lot of that uh, requirements. And additionally, we established a financial framework contract with blindside networks. And uh, currently, I think 16 universities signed it. To, to have some ongoing relationship and uh, to support the ongoing developments of Big Blue Button and bring in and discuss the features necessary within the German community. The BBB community in Germany is very um, active. For example, there are now weekly developer meetings. I think it's every Monday for software developers. There's a ZKR working group to exchange, that's more the group for the IT heads. There are workshops every four to eight weeks about the experiences, best practices, and the future and upcoming activities. You know, the service agreement, as I just said, about with blindside networks, and a lot of discussions going on about uh, what and which features are required and what could be done to improve Big Blue Button. And uh, that's one talk later. I don't want to take the slides uh, from, but there are a lot of uh, outcomes from the developments here, like one uh, BBB at scale with a lot of very nice and interesting functionality. Uh, one aspect why Big Blue Button had so much impact in Germany is illustrated by this survey here. It's uh, as you can see, that's the top trend survey 2021. What has has been the top trends for the German IT centers? Um, and the first four are the usual suspects. You could say it's cloud, information security, data protection, and digitalization. But the, uh, the three I highlighted here are quite new. They never have been mentioned so far in other top trend surveys. So they are very much related to the pandemic. And uh, digital sovereignty is one 
coming up from the Schrems II ruling. I will have to explain to you because I think people from outside of the European Union won't, are probably not aware of this ruling. The background is that in July, the Court of Justice declared the US privacy shield invalid, which is which was quite a disaster for many because it means uh, we have not been able from that point on to directly use services provided from the USA, not provided from kind of EU data centers. And um, that made the problems we had during the pandemic, of course, even more severe because uh, now there was these questioned all the services we could easily buy in for the pandemic. And uh, one measure to contract US services was the standard contract clauses, SCC. And um, so now we have to reevaluate all the contracts and all the measures to take to improve uh, data protection, data privacy and data and security. So that's a big extra effort during the pandemic to, to establish the solutions which comply and take up on the Schrems II ruling. That is one of the reasons why Big Blue Button uh, was favored by so many institutions because, uh, of course, with an on-premises installation, you could easily fulfill all of these requirements. And uh, currently, by that uh, ruling, or even a bit before, the term digital sovereignty, as most of you, I suppose, are aware of, is a, a high profile term now in the European Union to define what is necessary for digital sovereignty on the different layers, like uh, you have the layer zero here, the raw materials or rare earth materials, and um, but it goes up to digital things like the infrastructure as a service platforms, data spaces and software te technologies. So if you like it, there's a very interesting paper about that, elaborating a bit more on these levels of digital sovereignty. Um, in last year, I think in November, we, we did a survey on uh, priorities for further BBB developments. And uh, as we learned from Mainz, or I learned from Mainz University, they always consider the product of number of open videos and uh, number of participants. So like you have uh, 20 open videos and uh, 20 participants means the product is 400. And uh, they always measure with these uh, product number. So before the version 2.3, usually this product was around 400. Now this product with the version 2.3 could be for our installation around 1000. Uh, that is a great improvement. And so this highest priority was really taken care of, uh, scalability, um, audio quality was taken care of. So many of these things could already be solved, although these uh, requirements were just defined in November. Currently in the ZKR working group, we are working on the new requirements. So we, we try to find out what are the actual priorities and what's still missing to, have uh, BBB as a real world-class uh, top, top solution. And uh, we are still into discussion, but many of the feedback is around user settings, server settings, what Fred already mentioned is a virtual background and the blur functionality, some things about Moodle integration, an additional presentation mode, and uh, some more collaboration features and about sound quality, but that's ongoing discussions just uh, was interesting to me to see which areas uh, are the most interesting now. Yeah, that's all from my presentation. Thanks a lot. And uh, before we start, we are open for questions. Are there any questions in the chat before we start the panel? Yeah, this uh, comment always comes that it's for 
weak PCs or weak notebooks, it's very might be very difficult, but that's hard to solve, I suppose. How do you deploy big blue button servers is another question. I think that should be related to the people presenting after us. These are the administrators and technicians. In principle, uh, we saw several different scenarios. Some is as uh, Mainz did it, they used a supercomputer. So they had very good scalability because the supercomputer had a lot of nodes available and they just used that one. Uh, we at Humboldt University, we made it different. We bought a lot of Epic servers because they have a very good price performance ratio for big blue buttons. So we could have this uh, round of 256 uh, threads in each server. That's a quite cheap solution to us. I think every university dependent on their culture of uh, procuring servers will have a different style to that. Exactly as Fred says. Simultaneous translation, I think that's also covered by or addressed by many universities, currently not in a concerted approach, but uh, individually, like we are in contact with a Berlin startup company to provide this uh, simultaneous transla translation and transcription. I think uh, some people test are testing this Firefox uh, solution. I'm not completely aware about the other open source solutions for that. Ah, there's uh, Christoph Krupper. Can you give a little impression about the uh, BBV installation in your data center? That's what I said about the Epic servers. And uh, many universities have around then 1,000, 2,000 uh, CPUs for that. I think that's quite normal uh, these days. Yeah, exactly. As Michael Klotzka said, uh, um, a solution for, trans for translation will be shown on Thursday. There are many things ongoing. I think it could be worthwhile to have a workshop on that to some point in time to collect all these ongoing activities about translation and transcription. Thanks a lot. Uh, as we now going to start the panel, you could think about further questions and uh, just ask it to the panel a bit later. I would like to start uh, the panel and uh, I would like you to briefly introduce yourself and uh, answer the initial question of why BBB is important at your institution. And uh, I would like to start with Jörg Last. <clears throat> could you perhaps briefly yes. introduce yourself? <clears throat> Thank you, Malte. Um, my name is Jörg Glas. I'm the head of IT of the Cooperative um, State University in Baden-Württemberg. And uh, the university um, is um, distributed about um, for 12 um, branches in the, in the um, state. And we used um, um, BBB for the administration matters in the first step. So we had a, a lot of other um, video conferencing systems in the education um, 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 sector and we use it for the administration matches because of uh, data protection issues and therefore um, this was um, the main um, matter we, we introduced um, BBB in the, in the last year. We had over hand over to, to Vincent. All right, with pleasure. So it's my pleasure to be there. So thank you very much, uh, Malte, for inviting me for this panel. So my name is Vincent Evelyn. I am a CIO of Heidelberg University, and I'm also leading the computing center there. Um, as a matter of fact, we are deploying Big Blue Button on a, on a large scale at Heidelberg University. 
And the main goal for us was to cover, in fact, teaching. So all teaching activities, um, in fact, almost covered with Big Blue Button. The main motivation is surely the issue of privacy, compliance, and data protection. But I have to say also the fact that uh, we have a tool with Big Blue Button which is uh, highly versatile and can be used without any clients, just having, you know, uh, in fact, indeed, your browser. As a matter of fact, uh, this uh, Big Blue Button is the most used, in fact, video conferencing system by far, really by far, in our university. We had quite a large discussion between the, let's say, if just seeing these slides, you know, the different competitors and uh, for all teaching activities, in the meanwhile, administration and also for part of the research activities, this is in fact the key system we are using. Again, uh, again one of the key aspects is compliance, compliance issues. Oh, you're muted, Martin. Thanks a lot. William, please. Yeah, thank you, Malte. Thank you for the invitation. Uh, my name is William Lindlar. I'm working for the department or the Ministry of Education in the German state of Rhineland-Palatinate. Perhaps you know that Germany has uh, is also a federal state with 16 um, with 16 states, uh, where uh, also the the education politics is in the hand of these 16 federal states um, and i'm in the department of education one of the managers for digital education um, in schools and um, so i'm uh, also one of the managers of this uh, big big blue button installation which multi um, mentioned in his uh, in introduction, uh, which we are running uh, with the University of Mainz. Colleagues from University of Mainz are also here. And um, I have to say thank you at this moment for this cooperation offering uh, Big Blue Button by University of Mainz for our schools in Rhineland Palatinate and for the other universities in our state. Could you perhaps elaborate a bit more how the federal system works for schools in Germany? Because I suppose many are not aware of that. Yeah, sure, I can. Um, so in, in Germany, we have these 16 federal states and uh, education is one of the, the main uh, politics fields which are, uh, which are in the hand of these federal states and not of the federal uh, government of Germany. And uh, so we are, for example, for our state, for Rhineland Palatinate, offering um, lots of, uh, of services for schools also in the digital field and um, other states in Germany um, have made other decisions and are offering other tools and other uh, systems for their schools. And for example, our Ministry of Education very early in the pandemic in the last year decided that we want to, um, to offer one um, one web conferencing system for all the schools in our state, which doesn't mean that every school has to use this, uh, this central web conferencing system. The, the schools have the choice even uh, to choose other ones, but uh, they have to, to care about the data protection standards Malte and others already mentioned in this talk. Yeah, thanks a lot. Uh, I would like to ask the panel uh, for getting started, what is your main usage scenario at your institution 
or your responsibility for William uh, for using Big Blue Button. Let's start again, same round with Jörg, perhaps. Okay, thanks, Marte. Yes, um, as I mentioned before, the, the uh, main reason was that we had to cope with uh, data protection issues and then we therefore decided to install a BBB um, um, system for, for the administration uh, um, section of the uh, university and we uh, then started to increase the installation so that we can serve um, all the um, education um, needs in that. Currently we are, uh, we are able to serve um, around 8,000 participants simultaneously with our installation and we are able to add uh, a couple of uh, web-based um, service um, to this installation if it, need, if it need, is needed. Um, and we see that uh, um, step by step the, um, um, the personnel and um, the lecturers are, are going to um, use BBB because it's easy to use. We have uh, low barriers to, to get um, a room. We included this into Moodle so that if you start your uh, the lecture, you just have to click on it and then um, the, um, the session opens. So um, I think that uh, we are still on the way um, here and we will see um, um, an increasing use during the next months, although we have a couple of other systems running. Um, so we used, uh, used WebEx, we use Zoom in the uh, university, nevertheless, um, um, the, the data protection issue is still uh, a matter and uh, I think we, we should use BBB as kind of backbone for the uh, whole system here. Yeah, Vincent perhaps, what is your main usage scenario? All right, thank you Malte. Uh, so it's slightly different but leading almost to, well I would say to the same solution. Um, so at Heidelberg University, the key challenge we had to manage is teaching and offering a platform for lectures in a very quick way uh, at the beginning of Corona. So uh, we wanted to have a solution which is on-prem and we wanted and we are taking very seriously all concern about privacy for our students. And I think this was one of the key motivation to check first, what kind of system can we have on-prem? Secondly, what kind of system, because system is open source. And by this mean, we'll have quite high, a quite level of compliance. We started in fact, uh, in a small scale. So for some lectures, and I have to admit that the success was such high, the demand was such high that we very quickly, um, in fact, uh, just deploy Big Blue Button on our uh, cloud infra infrastructure we already had, an OpenStack uh, platform, and were able quite quickly to offer this service. So we have possibly the same setup as Jörg in the sense that we do not have only a Big Blue Button, so we have uh, WebEx and uh, Zoom and Teams as a fiber systems, but for teaching, we give the official recommendation to use indeed a big blue button and we accept only if there is a very good reason not to use big blue button, only for in that situation, we accept the use of other tools. A big blue button in the meanwhile is strongly used in research and indeed also in our administration. But the origin, I would say the starting point for the deployment was indeed uh, lectures uh, during COVID. And in the meanwhile, it's a kind of normal way to use Big Blue Button, in fact, for the online lectures. Thanks a lot. William, what is your main usage scenario for these uh, installations hosted or supported by the Rhineland Palatinate government? Yeah, as I already mentioned, it was uh, the decision to offer one system uh, to all of the schools in our state 
And uh, after this decision, we, we first uh, started with a commercial tool, which we licensed for uh, half a year in, in the last year. But we uh, began parallel to that in, uh, in uh, starting and upsetting uh, this big blue button installation. And our main uh, need was also to fulfill the high European data protection standards. Um, also, uh, that this, uh, this court decision uh, wasn't already, uh, wasn't already uh, filled in uh, at the beginning of the pandemic. And uh, so we also started to to look for a web conferencing tool which meets uh, these these high uh, European standards and uh, which we can run on our own servers and also um, yeah meets these uh, standards for the future. Thanks. What do you think are the biggest differences between? Uh... BBB for schools and BBB for universities. Are you aware of any bigger differences? Um, I, I think that one interesting thing is that we also have uh, very young students uh, which which used uh, Big Blue Button in our uh, installation. So that means that starting from the first grade, our uh, our small pupils uh, had to use this big blue button at uh, mainly at the second lockdown we had in Germany uh, starting from December of the last year and um, yeah also to um, to explain uh, to these uh, small small pupils uh, that they uh, have to make something like an echo test and uh, that they should use a headset. It's clear that they are instructed also by their parents uh, at these challenges, but I think it's a, it's a quite big difference compared to university students, for example. Any other answers perhaps from you, Vincent? So I could imagine, but I'm not sure, I'm not an expert about the school system, but I could imagine that the scenarios of user are maybe slightly different in the sense that um, there is a need for the students to meet together without, I would say, supervision of any person. So uh, there is, we, we noticed that at Heidelberg University, there is a huge demand from the students to interact together without, you know, uh, the framework of a lecture. And this is possibly a, a slightly different scenario uh, as compared to schools, maybe, where this demand is not such high. Uh, and indeed, we, we can, based on a big blue button, we, we have offered such kind of services where students have their own rooms and can use it, in fact, for interacting together. But, well, I would say with respect to the number, uh, maybe the second point would be possibly the sizing of the conferencing, of the conferences, sorry. Uh, so we have very large lectures, for example, of 200, 500, even 1,000 for some conferences. Uh, I assume, but maybe I'm wrong, William, I don't know, but I assume that this is maybe more specific for universities. That would have been my answer as well. When we have the one on ones or the introductory lessons, that might yeah. have up to 1,000 yeah. participants. Jörg. Yeah, the, the biggest, uh, I, I can add that the biggest scenario in the school, uh, in German schools, is some uh, conferencing with, uh, with all the teachers, which mm -hmm. can be about 200 persons in, in maximum. This could be a, a bigger conference in our setting. There's one question from Stefan. Uh, what maximum number of users is possible inside one room with a version 
I have in mind that it's uh, the factor of 1,000. So one camera, 1,000 participants means the factor of 1,000. But uh, I think there's a Corento limit, which Fred could explain. Um, yeah, I'm I'm sure. so I don't think we would do, I don't think we would recommend yet 1,000. Uh, I'll talk about this in the t my presentation, but in 2.3, uh, the message handling in the back end got improved a lot. So instead of one single node process, we now like, can spread it out over multiple node processes and the more CPUs, you can have more. We are fairly conservative in the Big Blue Button project. If you you know, know that we always say like 100 users or less. Uh, there was one, uh, Terry Kaufman just posted, they've seen like 260 participants with five webcams. Uh, we'll probably give fairly conservative guidance. I wouldn't give a thousand. Uh, we'll probably say 200, maybe 250, and we'll leave it to the community to sort of push it a bit harder. But you'll get a lot more scalability, just not a thousand, I would say, probably around 200, 250. But there's that's not hard coded. There's still room above that if you have lots of CPUs. Mm -hmm. There's one question to William. I live in the state of Hesse, and according to several teacher friends of mine, a big bottleneck appears to be the amount of bandwidth that a school has. Yeah, How do you that's... deal with that in Rhinelum yeah. Lake in it? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we we try to um, to improve also this uh, bandwidth, which is a problem uh, in in some regions of Germany. Um, we try to help the schools even in that. Um, they are also the, the cities where the schools are located in charge um, of this bandwidth and uh, internet connection uh, things. And um, but the, in the setting we had during the lockdown, um, the two lockdowns in Germany, uh, the bandwidth in schools uh, didn't uh, hasn't been the problem because uh, also students and teachers were working at home, and uh, so we were very happy with some other functions in Big Blue Button, uh, for example, reducing the bandwidth and uh, also with the. Uh, telephone um, connection, connecting option uh, of Big Blue Button. So this is a, a quite good alternative for, uh, for teachers, but mainly for students, which don't have uh, this good internet connection. We at Humboldt, we also increased our bandwidth to the outside exactly for that purposes. Amante, if you don't mind, uh, you just talked about the the um, scenarios in which kinds uh, in which uh, BB is used, and we as uh, DHBW, I, we used is uh, it for also for committee meetings within in our uh, sector because uh, there was no no way to to meet in person, and um, we had. Um, we, we we tried to develop that um, explicitly to to have this data protection uh, issue um, in that uh, case ser served. And um, we tried to include um, polling um, matters or other things in this um, sections by including other softwares so that we can uh, have all the processes we need for the committees um, within a BBB. So we, I think we have a very big um, um, variety of, of usage um, scenarios from school settings um, to university or, or group uh, work uh, up to the, the committee um, part then. There was one more answer from uh, Fred to this uh, 1000 user issue. There's one solution developed by Riyad Weiss in Tunisia uh, called Sprout Breeze, which is exactly aiming for that uh, scenario. I have one more question. Uh, why was the decision made uh, in favor of BBB in 2022? That's interesting. Perhaps you could start with Jörg this time. Uh, we had a colleague uh, in the IT section that said that, that, that should be a good uh, tool to work on. So we, we checked it and we decided that this is a, a, good, um, yeah, a good tool for us. 
And um, we then tried to um, set up a, a, a team of experts that explicitly work on BBB for us. So we have a dedicated team uh, in one of our uh, branches that, that really is just working on BBB and pre, uh, preparing and uh, providing it for the whole university. The, with by chance, so to say, or by, uh, by expertise, so. <laughs> Thanks. Vincent. Uh, this is a very, very good question, uh, Malte. So as a matter of fact, um, I would say we were quite successful with uh, using the blue button and we want to continue on this path. And as a matter of fact, we did not have a lot of time to interact with other institutions. So we had to, to work very quickly and to be able to provide and deliver the needed services for the university. It turns out that we noticed that Jörg is there and as it were, was also very successful in, the, in using Big button. It turns out that Malte uh, Dreyer is very active and doing a very, very nice work in Germany. And so we discovered at some level that we are not alone in, in, in using the, uh, this technology and using it in a successful way. And I think, so currently we have in fact almost at least two reasons. One reason is that the state Baden-Württemberg is willing to indeed improve and, and think bigger in the direction of Big Blue Button. And, and this is quite, to my opinion, quite an interesting uh, project to see if we can indeed uh, define a kind of service for the academic world in, in, in Baden-Württemberg. And we would like to do that, of course, in cooperation with uh, other institutions and ZKI has already prepared, in fact, I would say the field in a very, very nice uh, way. So to keep it short, we are highly motivated because we know we are not alone. We were quite successful in using that and we know there, are, uh, there is already a, a very active and vivid network working on that topic. And there is here, to my opinion, very good potential to, let's say, to, to build on a system which is highly compliant. And I think, you know, you, are, you mentioned in your presentation, data sovereignty, and I think for the academic world, this is surely a very important topic. So this is some of the reason why we want, and we are going to continue on that path. Thanks, I think you're totally right. One of the main aspects why we've been so successful in Germany deploying BBB was we got the community started very fast yeah. and got together. That's very important. William. Yeah, I think it was, uh, in, in our case, it was uh, on the recommendation of University of Mainz, of uh, the, um, the IT experts there uh, who gave us the advice to, to uh, start with Big Blue Button. Yeah, Fred, could you help us? Do we have some more time or are we already at the edge of our slot? Uh, so there's actually just two more minutes left in the official, but I would recommend if you guys have a little more time, hang around for a little bit. We'll stop the formal recording in about a minute. But I think there's a lot of people here that would love to continue to interact. The talk has been fantastic. So um, you could probably just spend the next 15 minutes fielding questions from the community as they, as the uh, the chat is going up pretty quick. Um, and let me let me let me just uh, I'll say some comments and then I'll I'll stop the recording. Uh, it is uh, fantastic to hear just how much Big Blue Button helped uh, so many schools in Germany. The point about that you collaborated together fairly early on was a key factor because you were, and as I saw from some of the collaborations, a lot of people were able to share their knowledge. And so you didn't have to learn from first principles. From that, a lot of schools got going quickly and we can see some projects that are coming out of that like BBB at scale and others that are enabling uh, scalability for Big Blue Button. It inspires us too in the project because we know that there are always things that we can do to improve. The themes that I'm hearing are certainly uh, usability, especially for kids who are using it in early grades, stability to make sure that the support costs 
are low. Scalability, we will always try to push to see how many users we can get into a session. And perhaps most important of all, after you get all those, it's the features that enable the teacher to engage students. There are things that we have planned, which I'll be talking about tomorrow in my presentation, in terms of just ways we can engage the student more. But at the end of it, it's to make sure that it remains true to open source, focused on the needs of the teacher, and to uh, continually work with the larger community around the world so that not only the consortium of people that's working together in Germany, but those features and feedback also come back into the core project so that as we continue to improve it, we make sure we're improving it for your needs as well. I think that's a very important aspect to be close to the teaching and learning community. That could be a really a unique selling proposition kind of. All right. Awesome. And so with that, I'm going to just stop the recording. Thank you all for uh, listening in and joining the session. Uh, it has been a great presentation. I thank Multi and the panelists for their sharing all their experience. Thanks a lot to all of you.